man has climbed Mount Everest, gone to the bottom of the ocean. He's excelled in every human endeavour except crime. Oh dear me. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't see you there. The MGGS, it was only on sale for three years, but it was MG's first entry into the very important SUV market. Is it any good? Should you care? Why? Let's find out, shall we? MG, let's go. Here we are, we'll never be the same And on the screens of our lives flash Words of good songs that we've not yet sung And we're not worried about the future And we're not guilty about the past We're pressing on together into joy And we'll outlast these sorrows And it's not as if we don't have to deal with our shortcomings It's not as if we don't have to wipe away So welcome to yet another episode of Tweet Jacket Reviews Today we are in a 2018 MGGS 1.5 Excite manual. This has been lent to us by John Newey and the team at uh, Summit Garage, which is uh, an MG dealer here in Dudley in the West Midlands. So thanks Summit Garage, fub it. Before I get into detail about the MGGS, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that and to like this video and leave a comment below. It really helps out on uh, getting us rank higher on the YouTube algorithm so that we can make more of these wonderful videos for you to enjoy. So the MGGS was launched um, in 2016 on the UK market and it was only made, um, for this country anyway, for three years. This is quite a late car, it's a late 2018 model and uh, this car would have retailed when new for £18,000. It's on sale at Summit Garage right now for just under £11,000. Now that shows you that these cars represent fantastic value on the used market. When the GS was launched there were three trim levels available for the UK market. Explore which started at £15,000. Excite like this one um, that was about £18,000 and the top of the range was the exclusive. The top, the top model of that, with which has had an automatic gearbox, was around £21,000. This car um, was most popular in the exciting exclusive trim. The Explores you won't see very much because they don't have rear parking sensors. On this particular model, uh, we've got the reversing camera and parking sensors. We've got climate control, mirror link, an AUX input, USB input, Bluetooth. Um, We've got automatic lights in this car. We've got an automatic handbrake. And uh, we've got safety features like twin airbags, curtain airbags, side airbags. We've got ABS for VSP. I don't know what the Euro Gancat rating of this car is. I'm not sure we actually tested the GS. Um, but it feels quite solid on the road. Now the HS has um, quite a lot of differences between um, that being the later model and this one but they do have the same engine. It's a 1.5 turbocharged engine, code of it of General Motors, producing 165 horsepower. This particular engine um, allows the car, and there was only one engine available, to do 0 to 60 in about 9.6 seconds. I'm not sure of the top speed of a car, but I imagine it's about 120 miles an hour. But when are you gonna do that in a car like this, apart from the Autobahn? The ride and handling of the car, it doesn't, really feel like an MG3 which is uh, the other car that was sold in parallel to this. Um, the steering I don't know if is it electric or hydraulic. It doesn't feel as direct as an MG3 anyway but then again it's an SUV. They, they, they don't really feel the same as a little darty super mini do they? One feature that this particular car does share with the MG3 though is the fact that the ride's a little bit on the jiggly side. Um, it doesn't seem to translate too much in terms of uh, tenacious handling. I mean, the handling is, is okay, but the ride is a little bit fidgety, um, which is not something I was expecting really. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the time, if you're on very well surface roads and roads around here, to be honest, are not too bad. Um, and it's not going to be too much of a problem, but it's just something to bear in mind if you live in an area that has really bad potholes. The view out of the front of the MGGS is 
is really good actually. Um, we've got this high set driving position. Um, there is actually reach and rake adjustment in the steering too. So it's easy to get the ideal position. Although I do feel quite um, high set here or that's a common thing on most SUVs. The rear visibility though is not brilliant. Um, particularly you've got the dealer plate in the back um, for insurance reasons and I can't really see very much at all. You really do need um, the parking sensors and reversing camera if you can get them on this car. In terms of uh, ease to drive, the clutch and the brakes, they're nice and good to operate. Bear in mind this car's a very low mileage example so um, it doesn't really feel very worn at all. That's a testament to the build quality. And every single GS got a five year warranty so uh, even the 2016 cars would be um, under guarantee until 2021 which is worth bearing in mind if you're shopping for one on the second hand market. Speaking of uh, things like reversing cameras and parking sensors, the exclusive model which is the top of the range in this car available in both manual and automatic versions had leather seats, diamond cut alloy wheels, it also had um, very nice silver roof bars on it. The car really looks to business and I think it also had some kind of leather trim around um, where the handbrake is and things. Um, this doesn't have that, this is an Excite, so it just has the sort of plastic. Um, but yes, if you really do want the best looking MG GS, I would definitely go for an exclusive. In terms of fuel economy, well, we're not really the best test today because we haven't driven that far in, a, in this GS, but from what I've heard, the Planet Auto had one of these in 2017 and that particular car was doing about 40 miles per gallon even with uh, Ben's very heavy right foot which is pretty good for a car like this although um, if you're sort of comparing it against things like a Serta Tekka um, then you'll find that the fuel economy really isn't that impressive. The Tekka was one of the rivals of this car although the list prices are so far apart that maybe they aren't comparable more comparable perhaps would be the Sanyon Corando that was available with a very weak 2 litre petrol engine and a diesel. Obviously no GS did get a diesel engine. Um, then they've had things like the Kia Sportage and behind it Tucson. Now those are cars that do have um, a few nicer features in them, um, possibly feel a little bit nicer in the interior. But then again, I think if you were going to get one of those cars on a second-hand market, one-year-old mid-range car, it probably wouldn't have the same um, amount of power and it definitely wouldn't have the same level of equipment for £11,000. This car is not as refined as MG's newest model VHS, but I think it's still quite nice. It actually is much better than I expected. Anyway, one of the main reasons people buy cars like an MG GS is because they're very practical. Let's see just how practical it is and have a look in the boot. You can open the boot on an MG GS by using the key fob, like so, and we lift it up, it lifts up right at the bottom, which is quite unusual really, so uh, just be careful of your fingers as you do that. Now I've seen differing boot volumes in this car, anywhere between 383 and 480 litres of space. I presume that's because the rear seats actually recline. If we lift up the boot um, floor, we've got loads of filming stuff in here. Um, you'll see that there's a tyre repair kit in there, which is um, pretty normal for this type of car these days. Um, you could fit a space over spare wheel in there, or even a full size one actually. Now, there aren't any um, 12 volt sockets in here. Um, I can't see any hooks in here. And the parcel shelf is very, very small. It's because of the reclining seats. It only goes um, back that far. Um, there's no electric tailgate in this particular car either. Um, the new HS, you can get that on the top model. The unusual thing about this design is it looks like it's got almost two separate pieces to the tailgate, um, the window and this, because of the uh, sort of angle of the rear of the car, um, which is a distinctive feature, if nothing else. And of course, we've got all this 
nice black cladding on here. The boot sill itself is nice and flat and so it's very easy to load things in and out of the boot. One of the things that has really surprised me about this car is how much room there is in the back. Now we've got the seats here in their recline position which does limit the boot space a little bit but there's still loads of room if you pull them up. Um, we'll do a cutaway of that in a moment so you can see how that works. We've got this armrest here with a couple of cup holders. We've got um, a couple of climate control vents. The door bins are very big as well, which is good. It is hard touch plastics in here, but you know, with this car costing under £11,000 now for just a year old example, I don't really think that's, uh, that's too bad at all. Um, the seats are very comfortable. Um, I think I'd have them actually a bit more upright if I was sitting in here, but that's fine. I've got lots and lots of headroom. Um, I've got uh, plenty of knee room. Bear in mind, I'm five foot eleven, and this is my drone position. Um, overall, this is a really practical car for a family. Like a lot of these cars that have off-roader looks but only have front-wheel drive in our market, it's very easy to get in and out of the MGGS. In this particular Excite model, um, we do have some hard plastics here and on the dashboard but uh, there are a number of other cars that uh, fall into this category. The Dacia Dust is even worse in that respect, actually. The controls actually inside here are quite logically laid out. I like these heated controls. Now, that looks initially like it's gonna be a bit confusing. Um, and there's lots of buttons. It may be like, a, I don't know, an Astra J, something like that. Um, but this actually is a lot easier to use than one of those. So we've got, um, Controls for the climate control here. This car does have um, climate control. It's only single zone in this particular one. Um, and um, we've got the electronic parking brake down here. Um, that's reasonably easy to use. We've got controls for uh, the stereo just on the wheel here. And um, if I just turn the car on here, you can see we've got this touch screen. Now it's not that big by modern standards, but uh, in 2016 when this car launched, it wasn't too bad. It's even got Mirrorlink, which um, is a sort of predecessor to things like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, there's an AUX input and a USB port uh, in this armrest here. Overall, it's actually quite a well-equipped car. It's just potentially getting inside this from, say, an MG HS or something like a Seta Tecca, you would notice that um, the quality is not quite as good as one of those. But then again, this car was considerably cheaper than either. This being the mid-range Excite model, um, you'd expect a few extra features other than the, the base model, which was called the Explore. And um, this car's actually got a reversing camera and parking sensors. I think you need them because the rear window is absolutely tiny. Particularly, we've got the trade plates on this car at the moment because we've borrowed it from uh, Summit Garage. And so that means we've got even less visibility. One of the things, though, it does remind you of, if you look backwards, is the fact that I've got a five-year warranty. And so this being a 2018 car, uh, the warranty will last until 2023, which is absolutely brilliant. The dials in this car remind me very much of uh, an MG3 or an MG6. They're sort of a thing of that era. Um, MG's um, current cars look a bit different from this. Now, um, there is a screen in the middle, but it's not a colour one by any means. It's just a very simple display, like a bar chart of the engine temperature and, of course, the fuel level. The bongs in this car are not as annoying as on, say, a ZS EV or an HS, which uh, for some of you, you will find that a lot better. Um, there is no keyless entry, just a normal key in here. Um, these door bins are pretty big. Um, you can get the secret mission documents in here, although I have tried putting them in a glove box, which you'll see in an insert, and um, it doesn't fit, which is a bit of a problem. Um, one of those switches, I think these are out of a Chevy Cruze, to be honest, because I had two of those. Um, not surprising considering there is some little bit of parts commonality between this and several General Motors vehicles. Um, the steering wheel itself, this doesn't feel again like, um, you know, something on a ZS or a face of an MG3. It's the uh, older design of one, but nevertheless it uh, feels bad to hold, but it's actually got leather. Um, you'll notice that the cruise control um, stalk is here, rather than actually being on the wheel, where it is um, on some of MG's other models, like the face of an MG3. Um, we've got automatic lights in this car, but the control is down here, rather than being on there, which it is on some other cars. 
Um, and um, we've got automatic wipers, I believe, in this car, although I'm not entirely sure. Um, we have got a double entrance, so that's, that's a really good thing, having double entrance. That's a very rare thing in a modern car to have that. Um, there's plenty of head, headroom in here. Um, in terms of the space, this car actually feels reasonably airy, although um, we don't have anything like a sunroof fitted in this particular model. Right then, what do I think of the MG GS? This was a car that, when it was launched, was very misunderstood. And if you compare it directly with its replacement, there are one or two areas that it feels quite lacking. But given this car only costs today less than 11,000 pounds on the second hand market, when something like a cash car would be 15 or 16,000 pounds, I still think it's well worth a look. Oh, excuse me, I'm terribly sorry. It has not been perfected through years of patient research entirely for that purpose, 007. Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd, I'm an independent vehicle consultant. I find cars for people. Please uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to do that. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. If you wish me to source a car for you, I'd love to do that. My website is www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Please use the contact me page on my website to get in touch. I've got a Facebook page as well, it's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you. Sorry John Newey, your car filthy.